theory, most men ultimately question their own masculinity. Especially here on this channel. This is a channel devoted to helping people psychologically overcome their hair loss. The question isn't, Nick, am I gonna go bald? It's, if you do go bald, are you gonna be able to still be as confident as I am when I go bald, no matter what age you are? Because ultimately, when you can embrace your identity, including all of your masculinity, which by the way, predictably, masculinity, one of the ways that physically we're defined is that we go bald. <laughs> and those of us who go bald sooner typically have the facial hair to, in some way, make up for it. So, I definitely feel though that in general, men don't really feel that comfortable with their masculinity. They're always, I'll give you an example. My favorite movie, I guess by default, is that, I'm gonna go with I Love You Man. I Love You Man, and maybe a close second would be Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. But either way, in both of those movies, you've got two people who are quite different and they end up growing their relationship and you see all the awkward tension going on and masculinity is in question throughout both of those movies, but specifically with I Love You Man, that's the obvious theme of this movie. A guy who's not really that masculine, he knows how to interact with women well, but not other men. So you see the awkward struggle he has to try to get groomsmen in, uh, you know, for his, for his wedding while his fiance has no trouble at all getting women to join her. He struggles to find men to be his part. And that movie has just by default been one of my favorites. I think it really delves into the psychology that we really don't even know how to be comfortable as men because ultimately we can look at these characters of what masculinity is supposed to be, which by the way, I've made many videos on this channel. If you see Naughty Nick in the title, that's exactly the whole point of those videos, is to sort of make fun of the concept of what happens if you're too masculine. <laughs> then you're just a complete clown and a complete joke. I've made, man, I'd say pushing maybe 10 videos on this channel. Naughty Nick going back for several years. That's a character that's been around for, for a while now. And that was the whole point of that character. And Naughty Nick will be returning, I think, next week. So... Uh, here's another thing I was thinking about. So like where I, where I work, I'm a recruiter. I mainly deal with other men and I'm basically helping them find jobs and they apply online. I'm helping them based on their skill set and their location, you know, trying to get them to find the, the best paying jobs for what their skill set is. And I'm talking them through the paperwork. I'm getting them set up for interviews and that sort of thing. And I've realized, and other people, my coworkers have brought it to my attention, that I have this certain ability to make them feel like they just won the lottery. You know, that they are rock stars just for applying and being qualified, and I'm gonna get you this job and things are gonna be great. I even told one guy after he got the job offer, I said, it was a Friday, and I said, okay, I tell you what, this weekend, here's what I need you to do. Invite all your friends and family over, have a big barbecue and celebrate the fact that you just got a new job. You know, I say things like that, not even thinking about them. I just like helping celebrate, you know, people, good things happen in their life, you know? But ultimately, what's funny is in all these calls, I don't think that these other men know how to react to another masculine man being so kind and positive and helpful because if someone's such a good communicator and leader, then we might not think that there is masculine. But there's this balance in which, it's like even, even when I say goodbye to them, there's like this awkward, uh, bye, uh, 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 okay, bye. You know, we don't really, none of us ultimately feel comfortable with our masculinity. We try to, we want to. But I think that's why one of the reasons I like making those videos as characters where I'm Naughty Nick or I'm that guy that says, oh no, that guy, because he's the complete counterpart of Naughty Nick. They're a complete opposite. A guy who totally appears to be completely confident in every way versus a guy who has no backbone whatsoever. And they're both hilarious. 
when you when you consider what I'm actually like in a normal video. But I think both of those are exploring different versions of what masculinity looks like. And one of my favorite examples of, and my wife are, and I are always going back and watching seasons of The Office, and as we currently are now. And it is so obvious to me in the show The Office that you can watch on Netflix right now. Two characters to specifically study, Michael Scott, obviously, but also Andy Bernard. In many ways, they're largely the same character. Something about them is they're indecisive. And this is a strong belief of mine that and one of the many obvious, explicitly masculine traits is a man who is decisive. But you can't be decisive without confidence or at least faking confidence and or having some life experience. But with Michael Scott and with Andy Bernard, part of why you laugh at them, why they're so awkward, is because they're indecisive. Masculine men make decisions. But men who can't make decisions, it's a lack of masculinity and definitely a lack of, of maturity. So it, it's interesting to look at these subtle ways. What does masculinity actually look like? You know, and back a couple months ago, I was doing this whole campaign where I was testing my audience by saying, you know, what was I saying? Like, I'm one of the, mo I'm the most masculine man you know, or whatever I was saying. I was testing my audience and saying that because I wanted them to rebuttal. I wanted my, my audience members to tell me, you're not that masculine, you're a beta. That's what it was. I was making the video saying that I was an alpha male. That's Of course that's what it was. Man, I got so much mileage out of those videos. People ate that up. So for like a month straight, I was making all these videos saying how I'm an alpha male. And then the response I wanted was for people to disagree, which is what I got. People said, no, you're a beta instead, which then I countered by saying, well, ultimately, to be an effective man anyway, to be someone that people like being around, it's a matter of ultimately a lot of times you have to morph into being a beta anyway to be able to negotiate with people at work, to be able to negotiate in any kind of relationship. It's the same thing. You have to be a beta at times. You can't always be an alpha. So and, you know, if we want to say that I'm a beta, but ultimately at times I'm somewhat of an alpha, whatever we want to say, Ultimately, I don't care. The fact that we're having a conversation and discussing it is actually what interests me. But the fact that we have all these question marks on what exactly is masculine and what isn't. And here I am telling you that being decisive is a major part of being masculine. Here I am saying losing your hair is a major part of being masculine. Accepting that you're losing your hair is a major part of masculine identity. Fearing hair loss is the opposite. Fearing is not masculine. You're fearing a masculine thing happening to you that happens to most men. So by default, it's not masculine if you're worrying about losing your hair. To accept your hair loss, which is masculine to begin with, is a masculine thing. I think, ultimately, psychologically, what we're seeing with this channel, look, looking at who's watching these videos and why, we're seeing that ultimately, people are struggling with what it means to be masculine. Being masculine means accepting certain things that you can't change, focusing on what you can change, but not worrying about the things that you can. Embracing, okay, I can't change this, I can change this, so I'll focus on the things I can and not on the things I can't, and therefore, I can be what? More decisive. What are your thoughts on that? I, I really think that that's a theory that really summarizes a lot of the inspiration that brings people to my channel. That they're struggling with their own masculinity, not, not sexuality. I'm not saying that people are watching my channel trying to figure out if they're gay or if they're attracted to other guys. No. I think a lot of people are struggling with their own masculinity. And I've said it before that one of my theories on hair loss is you're more bothered by hair loss if you don't have a positive role model in your life. Some of you do not have a good relationship with your father. Some of you do not know your father. In addition to that, some of you just simply don't have positive male relationships with men who are older than you. And by default, for some of you, I'm the only person in that role, especially when I'm doing two or three videos a day. You're getting that constant source of positive male input from an older person who has life experience to actually help you. So. 
I can't wait to hear what you have to say right here about that.